What is going on hybrid shooters? It's Jason Vong and this is a video on things you should know before you get the Zhiyun Weibo Lab. Here are some of the things that we'll be going over in this video. The types of lenses that this thing can support. Will this fit into your camera bag? Is it worth the upgrade from the Crane Plus or should you go for something like the Crane 3? And yes, I'll go over the sick monitor setup that I have going on on my Weibo Lab. And towards the end of the video, I'll be talking about Sony's B Alpha event that happened in Los Angeles a few days ago, as well as a few others that are coming up. Now before we get this video started, just a few disclaimers. I am an ambassador for Zhiyun, so take that as you will. But this video is to help others make an informed decision as to whether or not this gimbal is right for them. Two, this video is more showcasing the test footage that I got. It's not an actual review. I don't like doing a review on things I've only used for a couple of days. So until I actually test it out in a professional environment or used it extensively, you can expect a full user experience review a few months down the line. But I'll have continual updates of my usage with this gimbal throughout the month. Number three, it does look like I have the final production unit. However, the firmware may still be a pre-production version. And the app that I was using hasn't been fully updated to support the Weeble Lab yet. So I wasn't able to test a feature like the image transmission. So I will do follow-up videos uh, after next week when the firmware and the apps are fully up to date. To answer one of the biggest questions that I've gotten from the previous video, this is how the Weeble Lab will fit into a camera bag. In my opinion, if you have a pouch-like bag or a messenger bag, the Weeble will fit in fine. I personally have gotten this to fit inside my everyday sling, my everyday messenger, and my everyday backpack from Peak Design. But when it comes to organized divider backpacks like my Airport Essential or my uh, video transport from Think Tank, you're gonna need to make sure those types of bags have enough volume to fit your Weeble Lab. Otherwise, you need to find ways to lay it flat. All right, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the test footage. Much like the Crane V2 and the Crane Plus, the Weeble Lab will work fantastic with lightweight combinations, especially mirrorless setups with light prime lenses. It will likely do just fine as well with light zoom lenses like the Zeiss 16-35 and the 24-70 f4. If you have the Tamron 20-75 f2.8, I believe it should work just fine as well based on my experience using that lens with the Crane Plus. However, I've gotten a lot of requests asking me to test out the G Master 16-35 f2.8 and the 24-70 f2.8. Unfortunately, I've gotten the same results as I did with the Crane Plus with the 16-35 G Master. It barely balances and you will have to remove the eyepiece of your camera in order to have enough clearance to maximize the full range of motion of your gimbal. It works okay, but much like the Crane Plus I tested on last year, when I start making turns, it wobbles a lot. And because it was doing this with the 16 and 35 already, I'm afraid it will not work with the 24 to 70 f2.8 G Master, just because with the 16 and 35 already sitting this close to the motor, the 24 to 70 will stand no chance on the Weeble Lab. For best results with these heavy zoom lenses, you might want to consider getting the Crane 3 instead. So let's go ahead and resume the test. I've done most of these test footage with the Sony a7 III and the Zeiss Bodice 18mm f2.8. And stick around, in just a few seconds we're gonna go over why this is worth an upgrade over the Crane Plus. Now, is this worth upgrading to from the Crane Plus? In a lot of ways, it does make it a lot more convenient for the user. For one, a smaller form factor is always a good thing because it makes it much travel friendlier. And I really like the locks on the gimbal because it prevents the gimbal from uh, moving around, going awry in your bag. Second thing, it has an OLED display, so you'll no longer have to be confused as to what gimbal mode you're in. Three, it supports follow focus, so if you do want to use a follow focus system with your gimbal, with your camera, you have the option to do that now with the Weeble Lab. 
Four, the 360 barrel roll. It's a little bit of a gimmick for me, but there's that option if you want it. And five, it now supports the Manfrotto 501 PL and the Arca Swiss quick release system. So if you have a ton of those on your tripod or your monopod system, it now works with your Weeble Lab. Moving on to why would you want to consider the Crane 3 over the Weeble Lab? So going back to our 16 to 35 G Master example, even though that lens and this camera combination uh, balances on the Weeble Lab, it is still a little too heavy in my opinion. For best result, you might want to consider the Crane 3 because it has a lot stronger motor. It'll be able to support even heavier lens setup like the 24 to 70 G Master on that. And because the Crane 3 has the stronger motor, uh, some of the extreme movements that you'll be performing on it will be a lot more forgiving. Especially if you're doing any zooming with your lens or doing any sort of uh, running or chasing, um, something like the Crane 3 motor would definitely be able to handle that. And as promised, here is my favorite monitor setup with the Weeble Lab. With the way the Weeble is designed, you can either have the mini tripod on the bottom or right in the middle. I personally like using the tripod as an extended grip, so this leaves the middle open for a co-shoe mount installation. You can pick this up from Small Rig via my link in the description box below. This allows me to mount my small HD focus monitor, and it works perfectly. The only caveat is that I have to use the skinny Sony MPF batteries in order to have small but enough clearance for the gimbal to rotate around. This really helps me see my shots better, and it doesn't add a whole bunch of weight because the monitor and the battery are light themselves. So if you already have a small HD monitor lying around, give this Koshu mount trick a try. All right, let's talk about the B Alpha event that happened this past weekend in Los Angeles. I am so glad my hometown had an epic turnout. This is probably the biggest B Alpha that Sony threw together. Over 700 people signed up. And I think that might have been the biggest because we had a lot of shooting sets going on. Not to mention the epic sunset that we all got to witness up at the rooftop. And to those of you who said hi to me and Vivian at the event, we really appreciate it. We enjoyed chit-chatting with you guys and having fun and just really seeing the people who watch our videos who really enjoy the content that we put out. Really, thank you guys so much. And if you missed out on this Be Alpha event, don't worry, there are a couple more, albeit a little bit smaller, but it's happening at Sammy's Camera at the Fairfax location on November 9th and November 10th. There will be Sony artisans, Sony collective members, and yours truly, the Sony Alpha Hybrid Shooter hosting free workshops, so click on the link in the description box below to RSVP and check out what those classes are all about. And to those of you who are living in Nashville, Boston, and Orlando, the B Alpha events are coming to your city, so check the link in the description box below to RSVP for those events and join in on the fun. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see some of you at my workshops this weekend and the rest of you in my next video. Peace!